Hey, good evening, everyone. Marty Bazaar here. It's the 22nd of November, 2022, Tuesday. This will be your midweek market snapshot. Probably will be tomorrow morning's note as well. Kind of in holiday week mode around here. Um, certainly feeling that in the market with low volume, which typically characterizes holiday weeks. Market close Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, shortened session on Friday and so on. Um, but interesting you know, action, nevertheless, if you recall um, Friday's market snapshot on the hourly chart, I was showing you kind of that classic rising wedge pattern with negative divergences on the momentum indicators. We'll look at that again here in a minute and suggesting that downside favored upside played out for the most part on Monday. It didn't close quite as low as it was intraday. And then rallied back today, started early in the morning and pretty much persisted for most of the day. And so I want to show you how that kind of looks on the charts, what levels we're approaching here and so on. But just in terms of kind of the underlying dynamics, it's easy when you get, you know, the nice rally that we've seen right here to start building your bullish narrative, even if you were bearish going in. And as I featured this week on the written blog, you know, there's several bullet points that are bullish. Each one can be turned on its head legitimately to create a bearish narrative. Both scenarios um, hold some merit. Of course, that's what makes a market, right? You need a buyer and a seller. So you need two people thinking differently about perhaps the same information, right? So as I've been kind of preaching lately on the, on the morning notes and you know quoted myself from my little 2013 book, uh, this morning, and that was that the uh, measure of one's intellect is no match for one's predisposition. And my oh my, how that plays out in the markets. Whenever you have two actors in the market looking at the same information or economists, for example, and coming up with different scenarios often that oppose one another, well, you know, you have personal biases, personality, characteristics, personal history coming to the fore and coloring how that individual or those individuals see the world. Um, here at PWA, one of the things that, you know, I am constantly trying to achieve and I preach internally is that we have to, as best we can, set our own proclivities aside, our own biases, political biases, and what have you, and do the work, crunch the data, understand the trends, understand the trends from a fundamental as well as a technical perspective. And being that we're managing other people's fortunes, it's so critical that we leave no stone unturned or as few as possible and be objective, not bulls, not bears, but objective, open-minded thinkers, always looking for the right asset mix from a global macro perspective that reflects what we believe is the correct risk reward setup. So in terms of what's motivating the market right now, what I, what I don't want to do is lose sight of the fact that this is just, you know, the best seasonality of the year, right? So markets tend to go up in the fourth quarter. We talked about that a lot coming into the fourth quarter. The setup looked really good to us. So we had, you know, a really good, you know, October, and then that's carried through to November. Now, and as I've also pointed out in here, it's been my expectation incorrectly so far that we would ultimately come down here and fill this gap from that Thursday when that softer than expected CPI number came out. And I said, it wouldn't at all surprise me if we challenge the 200 day moving average during the fourth quarter. But I suspect, and you know, a lot of it was technicals, that I suspect we'll come down and test this level around 3,800 first. Now that still could play out. It could play out you know, after this Thanksgiving low volume week, or we could get some big negative surprise from the Fed minutes. I actually think the Fed speakers have tried to maybe soften the blow that may come tomorrow because clearly they are supporting what we're seeing in Fed funds futures, and that's a half a percent 
increase come December 14th, not the 75 basis points that was factored in early October with it, like a 77% probability. And that's really the result of, you know, a weaker than expected CPI and then PPI, producer price index as well. And I think some concerns that they have about systemic risk, something breaking as it almost did in the UK here recently. So the market is forecasting clearly something weak with regard to the economy enough so that the Fed not only will pause, but will actually be cutting mid-year next year. And when you think about the market rallying on that news, you know, it makes sense because the softer Fed makes some sense. However, if we're talking recession, we're talking earnings disappointments, and that makes for the next leg lower in a bear market that occurs during a recession. And recall, as I said umpteen times, and originally those of you who watch all the videos will remember months ago, we actually drew our line in the sand right here at 3,500. Literally hit that oh, a number of Thursdays ago and bounced off of it and haven't seen it since. But when we originally set that target, we were looking at a bear market outside of a recession. And that's what made a lot of sense to us. But we did say, however, if when we get there, our recession indicators say recession odds favor further expansion, then we're going to have to target something lower. And so in a recessionary scenario, we're down, you know, 3,000 to 3,500. So that's what we ultimately expect to happen. But we don't think that happens in the fourth quarter this year. It could. We think it happens after the start of next year, but it has to coincide, in our view, with a recession and a real slow down in the corporate earnings setup going into next year. And we think it'll be a mild one and we think we'll come out of it relatively quickly. And we actually are pretty optimistic about the second half of 2023. So we'll see how that plays out. And, um, you know, this all is subject to change. I mean, I have a soft landing scenario where there is no recession as well. It just has lower probabilities than our recession scenario right here currently. Um, okay, so again, good seasonality, somewhat accommodating Fed speak relative to what we've been seeing is helping this market continue to, to melt up a little bit here. Now, remember in the last video, let me clean this up. I pointed to this double layer here of Fibonacci retracement. So going from the all time high down to here and then retracing back. Um, you get to this 50% line, which is right at 4,000. And then if you retrace this rally or this decline right here from this August short-term bear market rally peak, we'll call it, then it's the 61.8. The reason these are highlighted is because these are key retracement levels among technicians. So we remember I said that here, that that's going to be some tough resistance to get through. We did and we bounced off and then we found support right here at this retracement level. And uh, sure enough, we bounced back again and that's where we stopped today's rally. It was right at 4,000, right at these two layers here. And again, I did say that we'll probably get here. I thought we'd get here first, but right now it looks like I could very well be wrong. That's going to be very stiff resistance. And then above that, you have the um, downtrend line for this bear market and you still have a downward sloping 200 day moving average. So while the 20 day is uh, very optimistic in terms of short term, I've shown you this, how um, when you break through that and you get a move up, expect a really strong, somewhat sustainable on a short term basis rally. And then when you break below that and it rolls over, um, look out below. So this, this is what we think ultimately occurs maybe after the beginning of next year. Um, so another thing I wanted to show you too, that I think supports our somewhat concerning narrative, again, not necessarily tomorrow or this week, or even, you know, even this month, but that is the on balance volume. I mean, it's been a while since we've looked at this. So just to, to remind you, um, this is cumulative. So what this line does is it moves in the direction of the move on the day to the extent of the total volume for the S&P 500. So when it moves down, like here, for example, that means that the 
market closed lower on the day or this couple of days, and this is the amount of volume that occurred. Notice that there was an update here, right? And so you had a slight uptick. But what this says is that you had very low volume on the update compared to, to these days um, previously, right? So this means the next day was down or the next couple of days, and this is the amount of volume. Then you had this big surge of up volume, right? And then you chopped around a little bit. Then you had this big surge of down volume as the market came down. Okay. So what's my point? Well, we can look at this as motivation or passion. Okay. Meaning that you tend to get bigger volume on the more meaningful days. So what you're looking for is you're looking for conviction on the part of the buyers and sellers. Okay. So it's a trend that we're looking for that becomes meaningful. So what I, what I'm pointing to here is a very, very noticeable bearish divergence, right? So we have this bounce off of that October low, right? And remember we were bullish in here, right? We had our downward sloping wedge, we had on these two indicators that are blocked out here, we had bullish divergences. And then we had this big old engulfing candle. And we had two of them in a row right here over the course of a few days, which is very unusual to engulf three prior days. And we did it twice. So this was unambiguously bullish. And then we, at the same time, we came above the 20 day moving average and that's sloping up and that just crossed the 50 day moving average and so on and so forth. Well, that's all great technically from a price action standpoint. But under the surface, it looks like distribution, meaning that you get these rallies and then boom, big wave of selling comes in, right? In terms of volume, right? So you can say, well, you, what about, you know, but we did go up these days. How come we didn't get much volume? Well, that means it wasn't droves of buyers who came in. It was just a few buyers came in and that day you had stubborn sellers. So the price got bid up, but it got bid up on really low volume. This was more impressive, but then it just came crashing back down. So take a look here. So here is that August high, right? So we had that nice rally, but look what was beginning to build here um, from, you know, halfway through. Looks like distribution, you know, it looked okay to this point. And then suddenly, the, you know, the, call it the smart money or what have you was saying, okay, it's time to start rotating out. Let's just do it quietly. And, and when we get the opportunity, let's dump this sucker. So here, you know, the, the um, you know, market goes up on a little bit of volume, goes down on bigger volume, right? And so on and so forth. And sure enough, the market popped right here. When it hit the downtrend line and the 200 day moving average, we had that sucker circled before we ever got there. It just made a lot of sense to us. Right. And then, and then you rolled over pretty good. Right. Um, we, and then actually grew into a bear flag pattern that played out almost to a T that was classic. Right. So there's your bear flag. There's your price target. Boom you know, fell just below that. And then you can notice back in here, right? As the market was falling, we actually had dramatically a lower low here, but you had a pretty flat on balance volumes. That was actually relatively bullish. That would be actually a bullish divergence, right? And then you've got this downward wedge. And of course, and, then, and we had some bullish divergences in here. And then you got that nice pop. You had a bear flag right here. You can see the dotted line that played out, right? And you could argue that it was flagging again, but that one didn't play out. The bullish factors were too strong. Then you ramped up here, but very quickly you rolled over and sure enough, you rolled over again. Here it's pretty dramatic going into the all time high, right? Earlier in the year, uh, here we are making that all time high, huge rollover in the on balance volume for the you know few weeks leading into that. Well, folks, look what we have here. This is not a great looking setup from that perspective. Doesn't mean that this isn't going to go roaring higher, that we're going to get some good news and we break right through these resistance levels, which are quite the layer of them up here and enter into the next bull market. I mean, we're open to all possibilities. It's just technically I'm skeptical that that's ready to happen yet. But again, back in here, we did say, look for a good, strong Q4 rally. And we've gotten that. We'll see how much oomph this has left in it. And it could have some more. Um, I think it's just going to be very difficult to get up in here. And if we do, we'll talk about that. And if from a technical perspective, we turn bullish, we'll certainly let you know. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go to the 
60 minute chart and probably just do these two today here was that bearish rising wedge here was our negative divergences rolled over but then you know caught it right in here and uh pretty good pretty good support right in there for the market right right about 3900 and again you can draw this line all the way back to here so that makes a lot of sense right there at 3900 now our um consultants who keep us abreast of underlying uh, options dealers and where they're where they're having to hedge and what the gamma exposure looks like and so forth um, they're basically saying that we're kind of pinned and there would be a strong magnet to that 4,000 quite a bit of resistance above that um, they also warn that you break below that 3,900 and there is nothing helping you till about 3,800 and by the way there's our gap right there uh, which is below that 3,800 mark on the hourly that I've been looking to fill. So, um, you know, in here I said that odds favor something down more so than something up. And we got that, we got that yesterday. You know, this is an hourly chart, but we've got nice, quite the nice rally today. And we're right on that 4,000 point again. We'll see how tomorrow plays out. So this is just kind of an ambiguous chart. It's, it's you know, it's, it's choppy up in here. Uh, would, wouldn't surprise me to see us fall off of that and, uh, and then find support right in here at 3,900. So again, got the somewhat accommodative Fed relative to where they've been, but in the same breath, they're telling you, it's just that we're slowing down the pace. We're going to do it for a while. And the terminal rate, depending on who you talk to is you know, four and a half percent, five and a half percent. That's where the Fed funds rate is predicted to ultimately go by the Fed governors. Uh, Bullard says he could see it as high as seven percent, which would probably be disaster for stocks. So, but he's, I believe, the most hawkish of the group. You know, the, the China situation has creating some volatility, a lot of it upside volatility, because clearly they're taking measures to try to move away from zero COVID. And of course, as they do that, COVID cases are ramping up like crazy. I'm not bearish on China stocks, frankly. Uh, given where they've been and given, given the incentive to juice the Chinese economy and the Chinese equity market. And it is a global positive for markets, and uh, including the U.S. market and so on. And then the dollar has rolled over a bit as well. And I talked about the dollar the last couple of uh, updates in our monthly equity market conditions index of technically speaking actually being something that's been relatively bullish because we saw it rolling over as we did our technical analysis on the dollar. And that's pretty much what's happened here. Um, it's interesting, the consensus around the currency from an interest rate differential standpoint, which is what a lot of traders are focused on. Um, they think the dollar is just going through a short term correction and it'll be off to the races, you know, into next year. That may be true, but longer term, that's not our base case. Our base case actually is a weaker dollar. And as we begin to look for value the world over, Europe has had quite the nice run here of late. Um, suddenly the dollar becomes not, not so much about interest rate differentials, but where in the world are the assets that investors are going to want to own? So you can see literally countries that are on the opposite end, the bearish end of interest rate differentials, meaning their interest rates are lower than say a competing currency like the dollar. But their currency actually goes up anyway. That's because maybe their equities or their property markets are now very attractive and people want to own those. And they sell, in this case, the dollar and buy the euro, perhaps. And so longer term, we do think that we're going to enter a trend at some point, probably during the course of next year, of a weaker dollar. And that, that bolsters our long-term bullish case for commodities and foreign equities, emerging markets in particular. And that's not necessarily consensus right now. I mean, I read a lot of narratives and a lot of research, and I like the fact that we're not necessarily in the consensus. Where I honestly, where I get nervous is we're on the same side of the boat with everybody else. So, uh, folks, I'm going to stop there. Wishing you and yours the best of Thanksgivings. Uh, probably offer a little something up on Friday. Uh, certainly over the weekend, the economic update and another technical update on stocks. Thank you, folks, as always, for watching and listening. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.